Hey, welcome to the Molecular Model Building Lab. For today, what you guys are going to do is build molecular models using this molecular model building kit. Now, the atoms that we're going to be dealing with are carbon. The carbon atoms are black atoms, and they have four holes. One, two, three, four. These represent the four unpaired electrons that you will find in an atom of carbon. Then we have oxygen, the red ones, which have two holes. One there. Where's the other one? There it is. To represent the two unpaired electrons that you will find in an atom of oxygen. Next up, we have yellow. This represents hydrogen. This only has one hole to represent hydrogen's one and only unpaired electron. Then we have green. This represents chlorine. One hole to represent the one and only unpaired electron in a chlorine atom. And finally, blue for nitrogen. Nitrogen has three holes to represent the three unpaired electrons that are found in a nitrogen atom. You will be connecting them together using bonds, sticks of wood. These need to connect two atoms together in the event you need to use a double or triple bond, we provide springs because springs are bendy. You'll see why that comes in handy in a little bit. Now, the molecules that you're going to have to build, there are actually two pages worth. We have H2, HCl, N2, NH3, O2, then on the next page, H2O, CO2, CH4, and CHCl3. You're going to draw the structures using either the drawing tool or the shape tool in Kami, making sure to use the appropriate color. You can use a black line to represent the bond between the atoms. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to build these molecules for you and then you just draw their ball and stick sketch. Then draw the structural formulas, electron dot diagrams, find the electronegativity difference between the bonded atoms, determine based on that electronegativity whether the bonds are polar or nonpolar, determine the number of lines of symmetry in the molecule and based on that the polarity of the molecule and then identify what shape the molecule is linear bent pyramidal or tetrahedral the instructions are all right here on how to do all of them so please make sure that you read these instructions as you do each column and then there are some questions that you need to answer to test whether you really understand what it is you just did. So let's start building some molecules. The first molecule we are going to build is H2. So we need to have two atoms of hydrogen. Now each atom has only one hole. So this is going to be really easy. Ooh, they look like googly eyes. Uh, this is going to be really easy to do. We need to connect a bond from one atom of hydrogen to the other atom of hydrogen and that is a molecule of H2. Go ahead, pause the video, draw the ball and stick sketch. Next up is HCl. Requires a hydrogen and a chlorine. Now both the hydrogen and the chlorine have one hole. And therefore, like with H2, we will simply connect this to that. Go ahead, draw the ball and stick sketch for this molecule. Next up is N2. Now, we could try to bond the N2 together using sticks. We'll bond one here and then we'll bond one here, but you see this doesn't work because it still leaves us with holes that are not connected. So a stick won't get the job done. What we need to use instead are springs. Nitrogen has, as we said, three holes. So we're going to fill those three holes with three 
springs. Now what will we do with those three springs? Connect them to the corresponding holes in the other nitrogen atom. And here you have a mo molecule of diatomic nitrogen, N2. The next molecule we want to build is NH3. Now we already know that nitrogen forms three bonds, so let's put them in. One, two, and three. So where do those bonds go? Well, we have three hydrogens here, so let's pop the hydrogens in. And this gives you a molecule of NH3, also known as ammonia. Go ahead and draw the ball and stick sketch. Next one we have is O2. So we need two atoms of oxygen. Well, each atom of oxygen has two holes. So let's put in two bonds. Now, since those bonds are going to go directly from one oxygen atom to the next oxygen atom, let's just simply do that. And there is a molecule of diatomic oxygen. Okay, time for page two. The first molecule we're going to build, H2O. Now, as we already saw, oxygen can form two bonds. But now, these bonds are going to go to one oxygen apiece. Go ahead, draw your water molecule, the ball and stick sketch. Next up is CO2. One carbon and two oxygens. Now we could attach like that. And then like that. However, there are still more holes in carbon and there are still more holes in the oxygen. So obviously single bonds will not get the job done. Since carbon can form four bonds, let's put them in. One, two, three, four. Since oxygen can form two bonds, let's take two of these bonds and attach it to one of the oxygens and then take the other two bonds and attach them to the other oxygen. And there, go ahead, draw the ball and stick sketch for carbon dioxide. Okay, only two left. The next one is CH4. Now we already know the carbons can form four bonds And we have four hydrogens, so each bond goes to its own hydrogen. To form a molecule of methane, also known as natural gas. Finally, we have a molecule of CHCl3 also known as trichloromethane. We already know that the carbon can form four bonds. The chlorines can only form one. And the hydrogen can only form one. Here is your molecule 
of trichloromethane. Once you have finished drawing all of your ball and stick sketches, go ahead and draw the structural formulas by replacing the colored balls with symbols for the elements that they represent, with dashes to represent the bonds, which means that a single bond would be a single dash between the symbols of the elements, and a double bond would be a double dash, and a triple bond would be, you guessed it, a triple dash. Then, Replace each dash with two dots to get the electron dot diagram. Look up the electronegativities of the bonded atoms to determine the electronegativity difference. Use that to determine the polarity of the bond. Determine the number of lines of symmetry in your molecule and use that to determine the polarity of the molecule. And then determine the shape of your molecule. And that is all there is to this lab. Then, like I said, you'll just have a few questions to answer to demonstrate that you understand why we did what we did. Okay, until next time, folks.